Hey guys, Jeff here with Passive Income Unlocked, and this is going to be part two of a two-part series on finding topics and keywords for your site. So in part one, we focused on finding topics within your niche, um, and if you missed that one, I'll link to that in the description below. In part two here, we're going to focus on finding keywords within those topics. So with that being said, let's jump over to my computer and get started. So in the last video, I showed you how to find topics within a niche. In this one, I'm going to focus on how to find keywords within those topics. Uh, if you skipped that last video, make sure to go back and watch it. Um, finding topics within a niche is something that a lot of people either just skip because they don't think it's worth the time um, or they just don't know about it. But it's definitely a step that you do not want to miss. Um, if you skip that step, I'm telling you, you're going to miss out on a lot of great opportunities for keywords. So if you missed that video, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So in this video, what I want to do is just show you uh, two things. One, I'm going to show you a tool that I like to use, and you don't have to use this. It's a paid tool. You can do everything without this tool. Um, all the keyword research that I do is right within Google search, so you can do it for free. Um, then, then two, I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use. So first, let me just show you the tool real quick. So that tool that I use is called Keywords Everywhere. So to get it, you can go to keywordseverywhere.com, and then um, it's, a, it's an extension for Chrome and Firefox. You just click the buttons here. Just follow the steps to, to install it for your uh, browser. The pricing is really reasonable. So if you compare this to some of the other search tools out there, like something like Ahrefs, for example, which obviously is more than just a search tool. So it's, it's a great tool for a lot of other reasons. Um, but for what I do, this is sufficient, more than sufficient, and it's very cheap. So $10 for 100,000 credits. One credit is basically one search result. So I'll show you in a second here, but anytime you use this tool, it's going to show you search volume right within Google search. And every time it shows you that search volume, you're paying for one credit. So this will actually last you a really long time for even $10. Again, this is optional, just showing you what I do. Um, I like to use this tool because it gives me some general guidelines to follow. I don't like to go after keywords that are super, super low or too high that are most likely too competitive. So I basically kind of use this tool to kind of guide me into that range where I like to be. So, all right, so if we flip over to Google search, first thing I'm gonna show you is that range that I just spoke about and how to kind of t uh, dial into that range. So first of all, the range that we typically target is between roughly 30 and 1,000 searches per month. Um, but we're actually not trying to target keywords that are as low as 30. Um, and we go a little bit higher than 1,000. What I mean by that is when the search tool tells me 30, what I will do is I'll look for variations of that keyword and see if those variations add up to a little bit more than 30. Because for us, we're not targeting keywords that, that are quite that low in search volume. Um, but if we see something that's 30, we want to dig into it further and see if there's more variations and if it adds up to more. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this will probably make a little bit more sense. So let's say you type something in, um, like, can you swim? So can you swim river? And this is the technique that you can use for finding keywords. So can you swim river? And then you just put your, your cursor be between two words. So I use this a lot for finding keywords and Google is going to auto complete the, the phrases for you. So the first one that you see here, so can you swim in the Hudson River? Shows 2,400 for the search volume. So if you if you come across something like that, you might assume that this search only gets tw or this search gets 2,400 a month, which is quite a bit. But what I want to show you is what you want to do is kind of look at the variations as well to get a better idea of the search volume. So like any tool that you use isn't going to be 100% accurate. We all know that, but at, you at least want to try to get it as accurate as possible. And the only way to really do that is to kind of look at all the uh, variations of that keyword. So just think of all the common variations. So in this case, you might say something like, can you go swimming in the Hudson River? So can you go swimming in the Hudson River? It shows me a search volume of 30. So if that were the, the uh, first search that I typed in and I saw 30, you, you might think that it's really low search volume and it might be low in competition. You might just immediately add that to your keyword spreadsheet. But you don't really want to do that. You want to search again. You want to search the variations and kind of add those volumes up. As we saw in the previous search, we had one that's 2,400. So this 30 is just happens just to be one that's not. It's a phrase that's not searched as often, but it basically means the same thing. Um, and another variation on that is: Is it safe to swim in the Hudson River? It shows 590 searches per month. Again, it basically means the same thing. So you have to search all the variations and ideally you want to find that root variation, the one that the most people are searching for. That's going to give you the best idea of the search volume. In this case, it's probably just going to be something like swimming in the Hudson River. You type that in, you're going to see 4,400 searches per month. You add all those volumes together. This is a very large search term. Um, if you would have typed in, can you 
go swimming in the Hudson River first and you saw the 30 again, you might think it's a low volume search term. You might think it's not very competitive, but we know that's actually a lot higher volume than that. And it's actually probably quite competitive. So I so wanted to show you that before I dive, dive into the method. So you know that whenever you're looking, uh, whenever you're doing keyword research, you do want to look at the variations as well to get a better idea for what kind of uh, volume that that search term might have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a few different techniques. First couple techniques I'm going to show you are ones that you've probably seen out there a lot. And then I'm going to show you what you can do that's a little bit different that can take you to the next level to help you kind of find those keywords that a lot of people never find, never come across. Okay. So the first method that we can try, so we'll go back to our biking. Um, well, actually the first thing, I'll just show you the comparisons. This one's super easy. So let's just say we're doing the bicycling niche like we did in the last video. You can do bike verse, something like this. And then just do every letter of the alphabet, bike verse A. So you might see something like bike aluminum versus steel, aluminum versus carbon, or you might see something like bike versus treadmill, something like that. And typically for me, I don't find a lot of keywords that are low enough in competition to target using, you know, using a comparison method like this. But a lot of times what I will do is I will find more topics like we did in, in uh, the first video. I'll find topics doing this that I will go back and add to my list. So this is usually one of the first steps I do when I'm looking for keywords. I do the comparison and I also do just where I will type in the root keyword like this and then just put a letter. And, and the first one that pops up is a perfect example. So bike accessories, uh, bike air pumps anything else like attachment for kids bike alarm so so this again this is a great way to find topics to add to your list so i didn't show you this method in in the first video because i knew we'd kind of hit on in video two but usually when i'm doing keyword research i i do what we did in step one in the first video then when i start diving into keywords i probably double my list that i created in, in the first video just by um, typing in various phrases in google search and i just happen to come across more uh, topics that i didn't know about so so never think that your first list is complete. Just always keep building on it. You want that list to be as long as possible. So, and again, you, what you want to do is take everything that was on that topic list. So we had bike was is the root term, obviously, but you can also do something like kickstand, right? Kickstand A and B and so on. So go through every letter of the alphabet. And some of these smaller terms like this, you're probably not going to find anything, but as much as it's probably not, fun. It's a really, it's kind of a grind. I still do it anyways. I go through every letter of the alphabet for every term I come up with that's on my topic list. I try to, I try to not leave any stones unturned. Um, it does take a very, very long time, but that's where you're going to come up with some of those keywords that other people are just missing out on. Okay. So again, this is just something that, that a lot of people do. This is super easy. I'll show you another thing that a lot of people do. So you can just say something like how to bike, right? So how to bike, and again, you can do something like every letter of the alphabet, how to bike A, um, across America, across the country, B, Bay Bridge, so on. Or you can put a space between two words, how to, and then do every letter of the alphabet that way, how to wheelie on a bike and so on. So you just go through every letter, just like that. And again, this is super easy. Take, take everything that's on your topic list and just do simple phrases, how to bike, can I bike? and then do every letter of the alphabet between certain words where it makes sense or after certain words where it makes sense. So again, these are, these are common methods that you're gonna see out there. So this is where I'm gonna kind of show you what I do that's probably a little bit different. And this is where you're gonna find some keywords that a lot of people miss out on. And unfortunately, I can't just give you a simple list on this. This is something where you're gonna have to get a little bit creative. And that's basically to think about your niche and come up with phrases that are specific to your niche. And that's really where the, where the magic is going to happen. That's where you're going to find some keywords that everyone else misses out on. So if you're talking about biking or bicycling, um, the first one that would come to mind is how to ride. So how to ride is going to be very specific to bicycling. So you can say how to ride a bike. So then how to ride a bike. And then you do the alphabet, um, go through the letters of the alphabet like that. How to ride a bike as an adult. How to ride a bike backwards. Sounds dangerous. How to ride a bike C, not much. How to ride, ride a bike downstairs, so again, pretty dangerous. Um, but again, those are some really good ones and you wouldn't come up with those if you're just saying how to bike and doing every letter of the alphabet. You won't see those keywords. You have to come up with those phrases that are a little bit longer that are specific to your niche. And the, the same thing, you can say how to ride a bike and you can put 
So how to ride a dirt bike, a road bike, a mountain bike, a balance bike, just by putting the cursor between A and bike, just like that. And you can go through every letter, letter of the alphabet doing that as well. So super simple method there, but you have to come up with the phrase. That's the key. And then once you come up with these phrases, you can take it a step further. You can say how to ride a bike with or without. So how to ride a bike with, with no hands, with a dog, with a baby. Um, if you have a bicycling site, you're probably going to have to put a disclaimer on there because this is getting kind of uh, dangerous there. But with A, dog on a leash, that's a good one. Um, with the dog in a basket, all right. Dirt bike with clutch and so on. And then, so how to ride a bike with, and you can do without. That's another common one. So how to ride a bike without, without training wheels, without hands, without getting tired and so on. So again, you're only going to find these if you had the word ride in there, which is specific to bicycling. So that's the key. Um, and I'll show you a couple other examples related to bicycling that you could use if you were in this niche. So instead of um, how to ride a bike, we can do something like, uh, let me check my list here. So how to bike, and then we'll say how to bike faster. Because again, you're talking about bicycling, so you might be thinking about speed. You were, uh, use the word faster. And then we will just put a space between two and bike. And then we're just going to go through every letter of the alphabet again. So how to a bike faster. And then look at all these, these results right off the bat. How to make an electric bike go faster. Um, how to make a dirt bike go faster. Pit bike go faster. Mini bike. Mountain bike go faster. And then this next one's really good. How to make a mountain bike go faster on the road. So that's a mountain bike, but specifically on the road. That's a really good long tail keyword. And again, it's, you're only going to find this if you use the word faster. If you were to just take this word faster off and you just put the word, you know, you and A, just like that, you're never going to see that search term. It's just never, it's never going to pop up if you do this. If you use a uh, tool where you're just typing in a keyword, in all likelihood, you're not going to see it there either um, because it's not going to spit out those really long tail keywords. Some tools will, obviously, but some won't. Um, and another example, just to, to drive the point home, so we can say how to put, uh, how to put on a bike. Okay, so how to put on a bike. And then you would just put, go through every letter of the alphabet between put and on. So how to put a chain on a bike, a bike on a bike rack, a new chain on a bike, a tire on a bike, a motor on a bike, brakes on a bike, see if there's anything else here, cranks on a bike, a bike rack on a car. So again, these are really, really good search terms that you're only going to come up with if you come up with that phrase that's specific to your niche. So that's the key. That is probably the biggest key for us with keyword research. And again, it's not something if you ask in the comments, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to just give you a list of here's all the phrases to try. You have to be really creative. You have to think about your niche and just kind of think through what are some good phrases that make sense in my niche specifically. And they're going to be different from niche to niche. So you can't just make a list and go off it. You have to get creative. Um, that's, that's really the biggest key. So one last thing I'll show you, and this is specific to keywords everywhere. Um, so let's just type in, we'll go back to boating here. So let's just say how to clean a boat. So if you're using the keywords everywhere tool, so actually, and I didn't mention this, but I do almost, I probably do 99% of my keyword research right from the screen I'm on here. I don't even hit enter. I do everything right from here using the methods I showed you and I find keywords that way. Um, but early on I would hit enter and I would use another method and that's what I'm going to show you here. So if you just hit enter here. There's nothing wrong, wrong with doing it this way. There's a lot, you can find a lot of keywords this way. So how to clean a boat, search volume of 590. So the keywords everywhere tool will spit out a bunch of other results as well. So if you go, go down past this trend data, you're going to see a few different sections. So you have a related word section that's going to give you some keywords there. Um, people also search for, so how to clean a fiberglass boat, boat interior, boat cleaning hacks, how to wash a boat in the water and so on. <clears throat> and then you're going to have some other keywords, long tail keywords. How to clean a boat hull, boat interior, a boat fuel tank without removing it. So that one's pretty good long tail keyword and so on. So what you can do here is you can hit enter, look at all these search terms over on the side, and then you can start going down rabbit holes. So you can click on any of these here. So let's just say you want to click on, I don't know, how to clean a fiberglass boat. You click on that, and then now that's your main keyword, and you just scroll down, and then you're going to see more keywords related to that. Um, so how to restore gel code on a boat. Click on that. And by the way, as you're clicking on all these, you want to be looking through all these terms and adding anything that you think might be a good target to your spreadsheet. 
um, along with the search volume if you're using the tool. If you're not using a tool, then just write down the keyword and that's fine too. So, but that's the basic idea. You just kind of keep drilling down. And, and I used to do this hours, you know, hours on end. I would just keep drilling down. I'd make a huge list of keywords and then I would come back and do the next step, which is competition analysis. And that's, that's something I'll show you in a different video because that's pretty involved. So again, um, this is something I don't do these days a whole lot. It's still a good technique and I definitely recommend it, especially early on. Um, but really you can stay right on that main Google search page and do the other techniques I showed you and you can find all the keywords that we find, that's what we do. So you, you can literally find just about anything from there. Um, the main keys, like I said, or the main key is to think of those phrases that are unique to your niche. If you can come up with those um, really unique phrases, that's where you're gonna find keywords that no one else um, stumbles across and those are the ones that are gonna be low competition and that's how you get ahead of your, your competitors. All right, guys. So that wraps up this two-part series on finding topics and keywords for your site. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos. Like I said early on, finding keywords for your site is probably the most crucial step in determining the success of your site. So if you have to go back and watch the videos again, please do so. These videos were really meant for just uh, ideas for you, just as a starting point, um, just to get you going. As you jump in and start to do this on your own, your, the method's gonna evolve for you. You're gonna come up with your own unique ways to find keywords, and that's what's gonna separate you from the competition. So if you enjoyed these videos, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe buttons below. Also hit that bell icon if you wanna be notified of future videos. And if you want more tips for growing your blog, head over to PassiveIncomeUnlocked.com. Thanks as always for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.